Ladies and gentlemen, it is a very special and distinct honor for me to introduce our next speaker for two reasons. Uh, first of all, for who he is. Uh, second of all, for the country he represents. Uh, uh, the Slovenia is a country where we have a very close relationship getting closer actually every year. Uh, one of the mo most active advisory board members that the ICD has had, uh, his name is Mr. Janas Janza, uh, and we've been working together for about four or five years now. Uh, Janas Janza serves as the president of the Human Rights Initiative of the ICD, and to our good fortune, he was re-elected as prime minister earlier this year. Uh, so as a result of his being prime minister as of, I guess, February, March of this year, we've done even more activity with Slovenia. Uh, such as a program called Germany Meets Slovenia, a forum for young leaders, uh, as well as a number of other human rights, as, whether, as well as cultural diplomacy initiatives. So for many reasons, Slovenia is a country which is getting closer to our hearts uh, every day. Uh, and I really appreciate also the ambassador coming today uh, to speak to us, I think, a very unique position also for cultural diplomacy from a small country such as Slovenia. Uh, inhabitants is only two million, so in that sense is very small. On the other hand, a very beautiful country. Many refer to it as the little Switzerland in terms of the mountains and also the Mediterranean. So it's a very unique case, I think, from the point of view of Slovenia to discuss these issues, cultural diplomacy and uh, the other related issues. Before I introduce uh, the ambassador, I'd like to say a few words about his background. His Excellency Ambassador Roman Kieran is currently the ambassador of Slovenia to both the United States of America and to the United Mexican States. Ambassador Kieran began his professional diplomatic career at the Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, in the former Yugoslavia in 1977. After Slovenia gained its independence in 1991, he was appointed as Director of Multilateral Relations Department in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Slovenia, and was later appointed State Undersecretary in the Foreign Ministry and handled the country, country's multilateral affairs. From 2002 until 2006, Ambassador Kieran served as Ambassador and Permanent Representative of Slovenia to the United Nations in New York. Prior to this appointment, he served the, the two previous years as Ambassador and Permanent Representative of Slovenia to the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, OSCE, based in Vienna. In January 2007, he rejoined the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, where he was appointed Director of the Department for North and Latin America, as well as the Caribbean. During the Slovenian EU presidency, he was also in charge of transatlantic relations and preparations for the EU-US summit held in Slovenia in June 2008. The lecture title that Ambassador Kieran has chosen for today is Risks and Challenges of a Small Country in, Reshaping, in a Reshaped Global World. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a very, very warm welcome for His Excellency, Ambassador Roman Kieran. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. I, I hope uh, I will not be blamed for the coffee break that you're missing. <laughs> I guess it was it was in the schedule. It's it's very tricky issue, you know. Uh, you work very hard, as I see, without without any break. Uh, so I, I'll try to to be uh, short in 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 uh, presenting you an issue that maybe gives you some food for thought uh, for for later on. But let me just first start with the title. I think one word is missing here. Uh, because a, a part of risk and challenges for small countries, uh, we, we have to, to, to talk also about opportunities, because that's basically that I want to share with you. And, and related to that, uh, I think that uh, there are few questions that uh, I wish to address and that I wish to encourage you to think of that. Uh, how does, in fact, uh, small country fit in, in, a, in a global world? What is the impact of the global world on small countries? And which is even more interesting, and from the point of view of a small country, more important, how does small country influence the global world? And finally, what are, in the global world, what are the true risks, challenges, and opportunities uh, for small countries? Whatever I want to share with you is, of course, from the perspective uh, of a small country, as uh, Slovenia is, in all respect, given uh, the geography, uh, given the number of population. Mark said that we are a country of two million. You know, when I introduced Slovenia, I add to that we are a country of two million with four million hands. So that means, you know, you can. <laughs> 
grow up, uh, uh, your strengths, uh, our strengths is limited, of course, uh, by, by, by this, uh, by, by, by the, the mere facts of geography and, and, and size of population. But I see that in your program that you talk a about, lot about soft power. And, you know, soft power is not attributed only as an instrument to big country. Soft power is the main tool for, for small countries. And, and this is uh, something that uh, uh, small countries are living through uh, daily. Uh, Slovenia also, historically speaking, was always a small nation. And that is the fact, of course, that uh, we cannot uh, change. We have lived in, we have lived in, in different uh, settings, uh, but we could not, uh, at no point, we could uh, change uh, these, these, basic, these basic facts. But uh, I guess that you, you agree that uh, uh, size does not necessarily define one country's uh, strengths and, and influence. And, and uh, we have uh, numerous cases now, either individually or collectively. Uh, uh, and I must admit, uh, also here in Washington, I, I just last week I was in one reception. I, I felt like I'm not a, a member of a small country because I was in a group of ambassadors from Caribbean, St. Kitts and Nevis, even Luxembourg, Liechtenstein, you know. Uh, so there are different criteria, you know, how one uh, could uh, feel uh, bigger or smaller. But there are a lot of things that are in common to small countries, and we have much more to share uh, when we are in a group of small countries uh, than when we are in a group of uh, big countries where we always have to watch our back, so to say. Small countries, they never have vested interests. You know, they, they stand for principles as, as a way to ensure their survival. Now, the, the world has changed, of course, considerably. and. Uh, and uh, we have witnessed a growing number of small countries uh, uh, in, in the last past 100 years as a result of democratization and globalization in the international community. Uh, I will just mention three tectonic shifts that brought to the surface a number of uh, new countries. One was, uh, by intentionally, I, I will I would put that in the context of wars, because wars are so often defining circumstances which make countries, you know, come to the surface or to disappear. After the First World War, we have witnessed the collapse of two empires, Austro-Hungarian and Ottoman Empire. After the Second World War, we have witnessed a a tremendous growth of new countries as a result of colonization in 60s and 70s. If you will recall, when United, Na United Nations had been established in 45, only 51 member states were there at that time. Nowadays, they're close to 200. So you see, we have a tendency of a growing number of new states, and you can imagine those are not big states. Those are small, medium states that are a result of these processes of democratization and globalization. And finally, after, after the end of the Cold War, after the fall of the Berlin Wall, we have witnessed uh, to the dissolution of multinational states, some they call empire, but definitely those are multinational entities from Soviet Union to Czechoslovakia, to former Yugoslavia. And uh, Slovenia was a part of one of these, of these entities. Now, let me briefly just maybe illustrate you how the small countries or small nations could seize the opportunities given by this course of developments. Slovenian nation which is an old nation, have been a part of all these processes that I have mentioned. We were a part of Austrian-Hungarian Empire. When this empire 
disintegrated as a result of the First World War, the Slovenian nation had an option. As a small nation of less than two million, we had an option, historical opportunity, to decide what shall we do with our future. It was up to us. We were driven by history, but you, you needed a, a leadership of your own nation. You, you, you needed a, an energy within the nation to define their political goals. And at that time, to make it things simpler and, and shorter, we could basically opt for two ways to go, either to join Austria or to join a new entity of Slavic nations. We opted for the second one. That was our free decision. You, know, you have options when they are coming in front of you. Uh, when history is written, then there are no more options. This is only theoretical, you know, discussion that you may have. But at, at the given moment, you have option. We had options also uh, after the end of the Second World War, when we were on the winning side of the coalition, where we fought with allies to, to win the Second World War. So we opted, in a way, to remain in reshaped Yugoslavia. At that time, that was, I guess, the, boss, the best possible option. Because by joining a strong Yugoslavia, we could secure our identity as a nation. We could secure uh, our borders, uh, which would, we would never have been able uh, uh, if we would be let alone, a, a nation with two million, and we were able to secure our economic development. Now, I, would, I will not enter into the deep reasons because of the lack of time why then we have opted out from Yugoslavia, but uh, uh, just let me stay on, the, on, on this level again to say that after the fall of the Berlin Wall, we had a great again, a great challenge to make our mind, to make our decision. And uh, that was the decision to opt for our own state. And uh, of course, this was uh, a historic decision for a small nation. Uh, that such an opportunity does not come every here and there uh, to, to establish your own state. But basically, uh, we could say that we were simply in a search for better entity to live in while departing Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia proved to be entity which in fact not only endangered at one point of time because of the broader circumstances, uh, limited our identity, limited our scope of possibility for, for progress. So, so we, we became independent uh, 20, 21 years ago. But uh, it is worth to say at, at the same time that, that we, we did not proclaim our independence to grow in isolation. Even before we became independent, we opted for EU. Now the question is, why would you leave one entity uh, and, and not enjoying your, your own independence and you immediately opt for, for another entity, which, which European Union is? The, the answer to my mind is very simple. Because the, the EU is an entity which, which is designed in a way that provides for its member states its full identity, its, its full independence, its full scope of opportunities to grow on further on. In, in former Yugoslavia, that was, that, was not, that was not possible. EU is designed in a way that each member state's identity is preserved. Now, for a nation as Slovenia is, of two million, where culture uh, has been the driving force of our statehood, it is extremely important that uh, we can live and progress in an entity 
that ensures the equality of our language, of our culture, and that provides a space for, for our identity to grow. I would go even further on to say that EU nowadays in the processes in the processes that are going in parallel, in the processes of fragmentation and integration, are serving as a very good example also for other parts of the world, which is in one or another way witnessing uh, the tendencies of fragmentation. But in Europe, we are witnessing at the same time also the strong process of integration. Now, let me just illustrate by one or two cases. Slovenia opted out, as I said, not to, be, to grow in isolation, but then to join a, a other entity and, and, to strong, and to strongly support the, this new, new entity of, of, uh, of countries which uh, tend to elevate the level of integration. So tomorrow, I would dare to say, with Croatia, we shall, to next year Croatia is supposed to, to, to join EU, and hopefully very soon also Schengen regime and Eurozone, which Slovenia already is. So tomorrow we'll, f we'll, we'll get together on the, again on the same footing but different setting. That very much the same is when you look Czech Republic and Slovak Republic. They have disintegrated for the reasons that I never question. That is the sovereign right of every nation. That is a part of the 14 points of Woodrow Wilson, if you wish. So they choose their independence. But again, not to grow in isolation. Both Czechs and Slovaks are in European Union. Czechs, Slovaks already are already in part of, of Eurozone. Czechs will become too. So the, the conditions will be reestablished on a different level again. That's why I say that European Union could serve to many other countries, especially in Africa and Asia. In Latin America, these integration processes are, are, taking, are taking more time. So, so that uh, there is, that's why I say we could talk about complementarity of the processes of fragmentation and integration in the, in the contemporary world. Uh, so that is also not the, the secret why small countries within the European Union are strong town supporters of EU. Because EU protects small countries. We haven't had any integration in Europe. Of course, EU, as you know, was, let's say, sponsored by Franco-German political support that this entity was established but it wouldn't go unless supported also by small countries as, as, uh, as Luxembourg, Belgium, uh, and Netherlands. And, uh, and the ratio between small and, and big countries within the EU in, in 53 was three to three, three small countries, three big countries. Today, the ratio is six to 21, being six big countries, 21, small countries. Next year, 22 small countries. So strong, effective EU is in the interest of all EU members, but in particular of small members, because small countries, they have to find a way of not only to ensure their survival, but to ensure the best conditions for their growth, politically, economically, uh, uh, security-wise. <coughs> so, <coughs> when you address the, the EU crisis, many are saying that this is Euro crisis. When you address the problems of Europe of today, it would be, it would be too simple to say that this is <coughs> Uh, uh, a euro crisis, that this is a crisis that can be solved by issuing euro bonds or extended role of European, uh, uh, of, of Euro European bank. No, this is the problem that Europe is facing now because of its inability to adapt to the change environment. 
economic, economic realities are growing much faster than political one. And politically, European nations were not able to respond to this, to this economic, uh, to this uh, uh, economic development that, that, that we have now. So what we need now is on the side of member states, and small countries are very supportive to that. What we need is consent for an elevated EU integration. So we need more EU, not less EU. That that maybe looks strange fr from the, you know, from the speaking from the minds of a small country. But we need stronger European Union because of the global competition, uh, because only with effective, efficient EU, small countries within such an entity uh, can, can prosper. Now, uh, let me just, in conclusion, uh, mention two, two more points, uh, which I believe you can expand later on. My, my point is that, that these influences are running on both sides. Uh, so small countries can not only be influenced, but they can also exercise strong influence. You can, you can get a number of cases individually. After all, uh, Slovenia has a few, you know, lessons to, 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 to share. Uh, not, not that long after independence, we, we were in, in the chair, of, we were presiding European Union of a, a nation of two million, uh, chairing 500 million entity. Uh, you have a number of other countries like Singapore, like Switzerland, that the, the, the strands go far beyond the, the, the size. And Slovenia has also not only this ambition uh, to, to grasp this opportunity, but we also grow capacities to, to do that. And no small country should really be deprived of, 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 this, of this challenge. Uh, but, uh, and, and of course, you have then also coalitions uh, that are sp specifically built up within the UN system. Just take, for example, uh, a community of uh, small island states which are threatened by the climate change changes. So individually, they cannot achieve a lot. But collectively, when, when they have you know, concerted pressure, they can change international law. They can change the views, the practices of a great number of member states. So they, they have the strength to change things. And, and this is something that is uh, specifically uh, uh, conducive environment within the, within the UN. Now, when, when it comes to sharing the, the, the experiences, lessons, uh, Slovenia has a few others to share with, with other small countries as an example uh, what, what we can do. Uh, we, we have a, a tested policy of coexistence of different nationalities in Slovenia. Uh, we have small nationalities of Hungarian and, and uh, Italian minority, and their position is preserved by the seats in, in the parliament. So, so this, is, this is important when you live in an entity as the EU. And, and in fact, that EU is so effective, it is because they have the capacity of, of, of managing these differences uh, that, that are imminent to any multinational entity. Uh, I have, I, I think I have, I have talked about that uh, uh, last year about the diversity management. You know, we we we, we live through these differences, and we still live through these differences. And EU is an institution which has capacity how to deal with this diversity. Now, it this is very important uh, because in the past, even Yugoslavia was disintegrated because it, it lacked any capacity to manage huge differences within these multinational entities. And after all, we have, uh, we have, a, a, exper we have a, a, a history of federal experience when we lived in Austrian Hungarian Empire, when we lived uh, in former Yugoslavia. So we know uh, quite a lot about this diversity and how to deal with this, with this diversity. Now, and, and uh, uh, in a concluding note, 
uh, let me just reiterate that uh, small countries are, by definition, of course, much more exposed and, and vulnerable, but uh, they are also the one uh, who can uh, trigger events individually or collectively, who can take an influence and grab the opportunities uh, that they have. To do so, of course, they need stable environment. Uh, immediate uh, and, and, and global environment. And I would say that for small countries, there are four basic directions to, to act in international community. One is that they have, first of all, pursue a policy back home, a policy of good governance and prosperity. Unless, and that goes for small and big countries alive. If you listen to the discussion in the United States, they address this issue in the same manner. That goes for the small countries as well. They have to be efficient, strong back home. Secondly, small countries, they need to promote good neighborly relations. They need, for example, the latest Turkish policy is pursuing this goal, make zero enemies with your neighbors. So you have to develop good relations with your neighbors. Thirdly, small countries should promote regional cooperation and integration. Before you nurture ambitions of, 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 of larger scale integration, you have to test the possibilities for regional integration. And historically speaking, that proves to be a very efficient way. And finally, Small countries should be the ones who are guardians of the UN Charter and promoters of effective multilateralism. Multilateral fora is the playground for small countries. That is where the dreams become true. But to do that, of course, small countries are the ones who have to stand for, for the UN Charter with its basic principles. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, Your Excellency. Uh, any questions or comments for Ambassador Kieran? Please. Uh, at this time, I am in the joke mom moment and mood. I used to play soccer with many people from Yugoslavia. And also, as a student in Europe, I used to, to work during my summer vacation with many people from Yugoslavia. And they always say, Dobro. Dobro. So I said Dobro to all I heard from you. Dobro means what? Good? Dobro? That's good. Dobro. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to joke around that. Yeah. The second joke is uh, whenever somebody tries to minimize the importance of uh, Slovenia because of its population of 2 million, you, you find a way of saying, well, 2 million people and four million hands yes. next time you add and 20 million fingers <laughs> thank you very much any other additional comments or questions for ambassador kieran okay if not then i would say once again oh, i'm sorry one one here okay then okay please i don't see your hand you have to put your hand up higher next time thank you very much ambassador um at least we from the sub-Saharan Africa, we, we're getting to know how um, Slovenia is working towards um, in the regional and um, global integration. I speak actually for the youth because I work with young people. You know, It's very, very important um, that if our elders are talking about regional and global integration, they should, as a matter of fact and obligation, also reflect it to young people. I don't, I don't know. I know um, Slovenia, you have an embassy in Nigeria. Chris is my name from Nigeria. I don't know if you have an embassy in Nigeria. Not yet. Okay, beautiful. So I was just trying to um, ask what are these um, um, strategies in uh, uh, integrating young people in your uh, um, program of integration? across the region and the globe as it affects um, Africa. Because definitely, when you talk about Africa, you talk about Nigeria, you talk about, you, it may sound very, very so funny. And through um, uh, regional 
um, uh, global integration, you see that definitely the issue of cultural diplomacy becomes a reality. It won't be something we'll just talk in this hall and go back. So the question is, what is the, your program in closing young people, you know, bringing young people to the reality of uh, your integration um, strategies? Thank you. Well, uh, what I tell nowadays to, to, to many, you know, youngsters, including my, my own children, the circumstances has changed considerably. Now we have broadened, you know, our cultural space tremendously by diminishing border within Europe. Now our area of application, so to say, is whole Europe. And, and that brings completely new perspective for young generation, how they can act, how they can operate, how they can engage. Because uh, within the, the limits of Slovenia, uh, this scope of application is much more narrow. And that's why for us it is also important that really we see EU as a window where we can interact uh, uh, youth, in, in, in different in different setting and where they can and uh, where we can expose them to the more outside outside world, but for small country uh, as as we are, it is important that we have strong representation in multilateral fora. I worked at the UN and in UN, that's three quarter of a job is about Africa, you know, and and, and through that. Uh, we, we engage our foreign policy, we engage also our youth, and, and uh, therefore to, to catch up with what we believe is, is needed, but we have limited uh, capacities to do that. So multilateral fora is very important for us to, to have this out, outreach. And this broader entity now enables us to, to use this possibilities for extended presence through the EU, which you know is in Africa as an EU, in Africa very much present. We also have considerable amount of development assistance, but which is still limited, speaking only on a national basis, but while in, when integrated with EU, then that's a strong force, uh, which is very visible al also, also in Africa. So through these instruments, our youth is able to engage with higher degree of perspective for an outreach than if it would be only for Slovenia itself. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to take this opportunity to ask you to please join me in expressing our gratitude to His Excellency Ambassador Roman Kieran. Thank you. Yes, thank you.